Hello everyone! This is the first video in the series about supremum and infimum. In this video you will learn the definition of supremum and you will see several examples that will help you to understand how to prove that a number is a supremum of a given set. What about infimum, you may ask? This is going to be discussed in the second part of this series on supremum and infimum. Before we proceed any further, let us recall what is a set bounded from above, a set bounded from below, and what is a bounded set. Just in case you need more details, it is provided in a separate video that is linked in the description to this video down below. So you can watch that other video in case you want to learn more about bounded sets. So let S be a subset of real numbers that is not empty. Then we say that S is bounded from above if there is a real number B such that whenever we take an element of the set S, that element X is less than or equal to B. We say that the set S is bounded from below if there is a real number A such that whenever we take an element x of the set S, that element x is greater than or equal to A. And finally, we say that the set S is bounded if it is bounded both from above and from below. So just to recall what that really means, let us look at this set over here. It consists of three points and an interval. It is clearly a subset of real numbers because it's on the real line R here. So every element of the set S lies to the left of the number B. So the number B is an upper bound of the set S and S is bounded from above. Now, every element of the set S lies to the right of the number A so the number A is a lower bound of the set S and the set S is bounded from below. So we, let us recall this terminology. We say that B is an upper bound of the set S and A is a lower bound of the set S. All right, now that we have reminded ourselves what is a bounded set, we can discuss a definition of the supremum of a set. So let S be a subset of R as before, let S be not empty and bounded from above. So we assume that the set S is already bounded from above. Then the number B is a supremum of the set S if the following two conditions hold. Now I left these spaces blank so that we can together write down the two conditions so that we can pay attention. The first condition says that we must have that for every x in S, x is less than or equal to b. But that really means that the number b is an upper bound for the set S. Do you remember that? Do you agree? So, or equivalently, B is an upper bound for S. All right. The second condition is that B is the smallest upper bound of the set S. In other words, if C is a real number that is any other upper bound of the set S, then C is greater than or equal to B. So if these two conditions hold simultaneously, then B is called the supremum of the set S. So now let us consider this question. So let us look at this set S here. That is simply the interval from negative infinity to 1. And clearly here B is an upper bound of the set S. Now the question is, is B a supremum of the set S or not? So is B equal to the supremum of the set S? 
Now, it is clear from the picture that B is an upper bound of the set S, so the condition 1 holds here. However, if we take a number C in here, this is also an upper bound of the set S because it lies to the right of any point we can possibly choose in the set S. So we have here the situation that C is an upper bound of the set S, but at the same time, C is less than B. To be a supremum of the set S, B would need to be the smallest possible upper bound of the set S, and it's not. So the answer to the question, is B the supremum of the set S, is no. So then you might ask, well, what is the supremum of the set S? Well, I encourage you to take a moment and to think, what is the smallest possible upper bound of the set S? So let me repeat one more time. I'm inviting you to think right now on your own. What is the smallest possible upper bound for the set S? Now, if you thought that this is number one, you were correct. So the supremum of the set S is indeed the number one. And we are going to prove this in a moment. So let us summarize what we have discussed here. So for the set S, as in the above definition, B, the number B is the supremum of the set S if B is the smallest upper bound of the set S. So to be a supremum, it means to be an upper bound, and on top of that, to also be the smallest upper bound of a set. Now, you may ask a question. We have defined what is the supremum of a set bounded from above, but does every set S that is not empty and is bounded from above does every such set have a supremum? Now, the answer to this question is yes, because of the completeness axiom of real numbers. Now, the completeness axiom of real numbers tells us that every non-empty subset of real numbers that is bounded from above indeed has a supremum. So this is a very beautiful property of the real numbers that we rely on. In order to appreciate uh, the whole topic of supremum and the completeness axiom of real numbers, let us look at this example. So let us consider this set S. So the set S consists of all of the rational numbers such that their squares are less than 2. You can verify that this set S is not empty and bounded from above. Indeed, if we take the number one half, it is a rational number, and if we square one half, we get one fourth, which is less than two. So one half belongs to the set S, so if the set S has one element, which is one half, it is not empty. Also, for every element R of the set S, r squared is less than 2, just from the definition of the set S, but 2 is less than 4. So if r squared is less than 4, then r is less than 2. So, But that means that the set S is bounded from above by the number 2. So this means that the set S is bounded from above. But then, by the completeness axiom for real numbers, if the set S is not empty, if it is bounded from above, it's a subset of real numbers, then there must be a number B, there must exist a real number B, such that it is a supremum of the set S. And remember, the set S is defined as the subset of all rational numbers such that their squares are less than 2. Now, we are not going to stop on this detail here, but it is possible to show that this supremum of the set S, which we know exists by the axiom of real numbers, the square of that supremum is equal to 2. So the, the number B is actually the square root of 2. So square root of 2 is a real number, and it exists in the set of real numbers. 
Now, you may have learned before that square root of 2 is not a rational number, and then you may have learned that square root of 2 is a real number, it's an irrational number. But you may have never heard an explanation of why square root of 2 actually belongs to the set of real numbers. And it is precisely because of the axiom of real numbers, and the axiom of real numbers is about the existence of supremum. So you see, the topic of supremum is a very important topic for the properties of the real numbers, and it allows us to show that square root of 2 is indeed a real number. Is it, it exists in the set of real numbers. Now, as it was promised a few minutes ago, let us prove that 1 is the supremum of the interval negative infinity to 1. So before we do so, let us write down some scratch. Let us think about it a little bit. So let us recall the picture that we have seen just a few minutes before. So this is our set S. It's just the interval from negative infinity to 1. 1 is not included. So we want to show that 1 is equal to the supremum of the set S. So by definition of what it means to have that 1 is equal to supremum of S, what we really need to show is that 1 is an upper bound of the set S and also 1 is the smallest upper bound of the set S. So let us know that this statement 2 in here, which says 1 is the smallest upper bound of S, is really equivalent to saying that if C if C is any upper bound for the set S, then C is greater than or equal to 1. So if we manage to, to show this statement, then we have shown statement 2. And this is going to be end of scratch. All right, now let us write a clean proof that 1 is equal to the supremum of S. So based on our scratch, the first thing that we want to show is that 1 is an upper bound for the set S. So let x be an element of S, then x is an element of the interval negative infinity to 1, hence x is less than or equal to 1. So this proves that 1 is an upper bound for S. So indeed, 1 is an upper bound for the set S. Now, based on our scratch, the second thing that we want to show is that 1 is the smallest upper bound for the set S. Now, let's see be some other upper bound of the set S. We want to show that C is greater than or equal to 1. Now, in order to be able to show this inequality, we need a little bit of intuition, so let us draw a picture. So again, here we have our set S, which is the interval from negative infinity to 1, and C is an upper bound of the set S. Now, from the picture, it's quite clear that C is greater than or equal to 1, but that's not a proof, so we still need to prove this. Now, let us prove this statement, this inequality c greater than or equal to 1 by contradiction. So, by the way, this symbol, it means two swords. It's like two people fighting. So, by contradiction. So, suppose, on the contrary, that instead of c greater than or equal to 1, we have that c is less than 1. And we would like to derive a contradiction from this assumption. So if c is less than 1, then c is located to the left of 1, and by the properties of real numbers, there is a real number x that is between c and 1. So we can write this statement as follows. There exists a real number x such that x is strictly between c and 1. Well, if x is less than 1, then x belongs to the set S. It's in the interval negative infinity to 1. However, x is larger than c, but that contradicts that c is an upper bound for the set S. And that's our contradiction. 
So to write this down, we see that x is inside of the interval s, and yet x is larger than c, but c is an upper bound for the set s, so x should be less than or equal to c, and that's our contradiction. So in summary, we have shown that c is greater than or equal to 1, and by showing that c is greater than or equal to 1, we have shown that 1 is indeed the smallest upper bound for the set s, and that finishes our proof that 1 is indeed the supremum of the set s. So we can write Q-E-D. Mm -hmm.